Is that working? There. We go. Uh, thanks, Trevor. Actually, there were a couple of slides on there that I would love to borrow. Um, I'm, I'm William Purcell. I work here at WePay. Um, I came here in September. Um, I'm an SRE on the data infrastructure team. Um, work with Joy. She sits right next to me. Uh, about six weeks ago, Joy said, hey, William, do you want to give a talk at the Airflow meetup on how we run Airflow on Kubernetes? And I foolishly said, sure, why not? Um, all I have to do is figure out how Airflow works and, and try to get it running on Kubernetes, and then I can give a talk. Um, <laughs> and I said, sure, you know, eight to ten minutes, I'll just do a quick little Q&A session. She said, yeah, that's great. Um, then about three weeks ago, she said, uh, no, let's, let's make it 15 to 20 minutes and, and let's make it a real talk and make slides. And I'm not very good with slides. So Trevor, I, I would love to borrow some of yours. Where'd you go? Aha. Um, and then about an hour ago, I heard Joy say that we were giving half hour talks. Um, so I'm saying this all as a prelude to don't be too disappointed that I'm going to suddenly end and it won't be a half hour. Um, I uh, would like to also call out John was, there's, there's Rick, where'd John go? John Miller is standing up briefly. He is our recruiter here because Chris has said that we are hiring and, and you should speak with John. Um, everyone says you say, I hope I'm not stepping on your toes here, but say things once, tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them again, and then tell them what you told them. So we're hiring and John is the guy to talk to. Okay, so uh, all that out of the way, I'm talking about how we are currently running Airflow on Kubernetes. Um, right, so when I arrived here, uh, we were not running on Kubernetes. Um, and I, I should, I should, I think I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again. I, when I arrived here in September, I had essentially zero experience with Kubernetes. I had essentially zero experience with Airflow, so this is all fairly new to me. Um, what we were doing, we, were, we had Airflow running on uh, three boxes. Um, they were all very uh, customized. Uh, what's the expression? I'll come to that in a different slide. Anyway, we're running Airflow under Supervisor D, so we've got the scheduler and the web server running on the same box. Um, as we're upgrading, right, we're going out and, and physically SSH into the boxes and, and pip installing to, to upgrade Airflow. And we actually had a cron job running, uh, I think every two minutes. I think it was every two minutes doing a git pull to update the DAGs. Um, I'm not particularly fond of, I love git. I it's, think it's completely the wrong thing to use for any kind of deployment mechanism at all and automatically running it every two minutes via cron to update DAGs. Even looking at that on the slide um, gives me little willies in my stomach. Um, it's, a, it's not a good approach to uh, really anything. Uh, you have one level, <laughs> sorry, it was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, the, 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 it's it's it, it works, you know, it it works, and but it's pretty fragile, right? You have developers will will push out DAGs, and yeah, you have a couple layers of a review, and by a couple layers, I mean one person looks at it for a few minutes and clicks, you know, sure, um, and so it's 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 fairly fragile, and you end up with uh, is this my next slide? Oh, look at that issues. Um, yeah, and the, the bottom line there, these slides are not, uh, I hope, also a few hours ago, Joy told me that you were actually live streaming this and recording, um, which implies that someone someday somewhere might actually look at these slides. And uh, um, So just look at the last bu uh, bullet there. We basically had pets, uh, not cattle, right? Uh, this is an expression that I just heard recently. Has everyone, you know, pets, not cattle. The idea is that you want your machines to be, uh, it's, it seems cruel that we treat beef this way, um, but you don't want to have emotional attachments to your, you. You don't want to. You don't want to be spending individual time maintaining your machines, right? You want to be able to throw them away quickly, redeploy. And we did not have that. And the the whole notion of uh, really using. Chris told me not to. No, I'm not going to go there. Um, there's a lot of issues, right? Uh, I haven't mentioned these much. All the developers are running on the same airflow, right? We literally have um, teams that are completely disparate, totally unrelated. They're all running on the same box. Uh, so you have no isolation, rather, of, of resources or dependencies. Um, our deploys of, we're pushing everyone's, everyone's DAGs at the same time. This is the right time. I've gotten into the habit now of calling them DAGs. When I first encountered airflow, I, I told myself I would never refer to them as a DAG because it's a workflow. 
and I, I was I was very enthusiastic. I was going to call them workflows, and I have adopted the culture, and now I refer to them as DAGs. Um, I'll just say that we should try to change that and call them workflows, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, all right, so that is sort of the, the situation we had prior to running to, and, and our intention of moving to Kubernetes was to avoid all of those things. This demonstrates my wonderful ability to, to provide slides. Um, I saw color in some of the other slides, and that's, that's amazing to me. I don't know how you, you do that with nice slides, but anyway, this is my attempt at describing the architecture that we're currently running. Um, we've got an Nginx sidecar, which really doesn't need, need to be mentioned, uh, some configuration in there. We're running um, Airflow. We're, we're still running the supervisor and the, uh, I'm sorry, the scheduler and the super, all these words that start with S, they blend together in your brain. The, the web server and the scheduler are still running in the same pod. Uh, I actually thought that was interesting in Trevor's slides that you're separating that out and, and pulling the web server out, which is, is nice. We just noticed that um, Fab Manager, we're currently running the web server, which has been merged into the master, but was previously sort of an individual project. And the Fab Manager is consuming insane amounts of CPU, um, which seems kind of weird since it's, as far as I know, apparently doing a lot. Um, uh, so I like the idea of breaking the, the web server out. We should, we should try to do that. Uh, I don't even know what this diagram is trying to represent. So I should move on. Um, we're still running Airflow under supervisor, completely contrary to the best practices in Kubernetes, right? We've basically got a container. We've basically containerized our initial uh, solution, right? We're still running under supervisor. We've gotten rid of the, the cron job doing the git pull uh, to deploy the DAGs, and we've moved on to, is this my next slide? No, somewhere in there. Um, we actually, uh, automatic deployment of the DAGs just seems really fragile. So we've actually moved to a situation where we manually, uh, we have an endpoint on the pod, which we, we just, we send it a push and say, hey, go get new DAGs. Uh, and then we pull the uh, tarball out from Artifactory. I think the first talk actually mentioned um, tarball using your distribution for DAGs. Um, that's, I think, not terribly interesting. So what are the actual benefits that we get by literally, essentially, we've wrapped up our previous deployment and pushed it out onto Kubernetes? Well primary benefits are we can really control uh, the deployment that way. Uh, one of the big problems we were having before was you go out to a box to try to update Airflow, you run pip install, and quite frankly, you never know what you're going to get. Um, you, sometimes it, it, it fails and you have to actually do a pip uninstall. Is it pip? I forget. Yeah, you pip uninstall Airflow completely and then reinstall it. And frankly, you kind of hope that you get the right dependency tree. Um, Pip does some weird things, which I said I wasn't going to talk about, so I shouldn't talk about that. But when you change, it doesn't do dependency management well. It's, it's not really a reliable tool for doing deployments. By moving to Kubernetes with an image-based deployment, we push that problem to a different layer, right? Rather than actually trying to be deploying and then you've completely screwed up your box, you're doing it at a build time, you're trying to build your container, and if it fails, you don't care. Um, so we've kind of pushed that problem down. And we've made our machines unloved and unlovable, and we can shoot them as we wish, which makes me a little sad. Um, we've improved the DAG deployment simply by not doing the git pull, right? We've actually taken it to a point where a, a person manually uh, sends a request to say, hey, run this version of our DAGs. If things fail, you can quickly revert that back, which is, is very convenient. When you're in the situation where you're just automatically deploying via git, everything crashes. You don't notice until you get the alert. You're probably looking at at least 10 minutes there. And then the question is, why did it fail? And then you have to SSH out to the individual box and, and fix things. Um, right, so scalability, much nicer now. Um, we can actually run a sim, I don't know. Yeah, we can do multiple airflows. I think currently we're just doing a single airflow per team. But by giving each team their own airflow, and now this becomes trivial, right? When you want to, uh, you, you spin up a new team, and you say, hey, we needed an airflow. You, you push a new pod out to Kubernetes and, and boom, you've got your own airflow and, and that's handy. Um, so, and I think the multiple is, is hypothetical. We currently don't have uh, multiple for anyone, but you get, you get horizontal scalability for free, essentially. Um, Docker, eh, got to plug Docker anytime you talk about anything. Um, yeah, so uh, here we go. 
Ah, so what is next? Very much looking forward to the Kubernetes operator. We currently run everything under the local executor. I don't know why I pronounce it that way, but I keep wanting to say executor. Uh, everything's under the local executor, and we don't really need Celery because we get the horizontal scalability from just running different pods. Um, but I'm very much looking forward to using Kubernetes executor, and you were saying it's actually live and people are currently using it. We could try it tomorrow. <laughs> that that sounds good. Aha, and the final slide. So yeah, um, questions. We are running on CentOS. Uh, we probably could. Um, I don't really know why we never did, other than it wasn't in the culture there. I think it may have occurred. At, to some of us to think that way. We had discussions about that briefly, but um, we, we knew we were moving towards Kubernetes, and once we have the containers, it seems to make that not necessary. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think the only reason we're not doing that is simply, um, boy, I, I am personally, I think that's, absolutely the right approach. I would love to see everything. I would love to see more packaging on everything. And it drives me crazy that we're, we, in general, the, the industry is using containers as a way to kind of, frankly, do packaging in a half-assed way. I hope I don't get shot for saying that. But um, frankly, the containers really do a good job of, of fixing the problem. And, you know, we're, we're, brushing, we're, we're, we're sweeping it under the carpet is what we're doing on. Right. Um, you don't have any any path in at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, but you can do the same thing with your containers. I mean, at the end of the line, we're, everything's getting cached on our local artifactory anyway. So as long as you have a channel to get things into a local cache for your packages, you can just yeah. 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 Um, please meet up here. Yes. I'm sorry. How large is the how large is the Kubernetes cluster that we're currently using? Um, let's see. So just for the airflow. Um, there's like a meetup going in San Fran about one of the one of our sh some of our shit. That's some of the shit we're basing our shit off of. I think Joey's getting. Did you get it, Joey? Okay. Um, how large is our current? So just Airflow. We're running. I want to say about 160 DAGs. Yeah. It was a. Right. Uh, currently, I think we're actually only deployed one pod. Uh, we just we aren't really that big. So, yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. So, right. Currently, none of our current deployments are large enough that we need to. Right. And and the plan is that we will keep it that way uh, to get to keep the isolation right. Where uh, when we hit that when we hit that issue, we'll think about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so the question is, uh, are we versioning the DAGs? Essentially, uh, essentially, no, we're just using the uh, git describe effectively. Yeah, so it's a account from a, you know, a parent commit. Um, and that, that's actually a good point. All the, uh, you we haven't isolated all the teams yet right a lot of teams are using the same git repositories so the versioning is 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 quite poor yeah. yes
Right. So the question is, uh, when you're running pod, when you're running in a single pod, uh, DAGs can, workflows can access the local file system. And of course, how do you avoid the issue of that file system disappearing out from underneath the pod? Um, yes, we do have policies in place. And yes, often it comes down to code review uh, pointing out, hey, this is accessing the local file system. Please don't do that. So I think the answer is no. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I'm going to pass this back over to Joy. Uh, 